I just don't know if I can do this. You know, I was so excited over the last month, month and a half to finally get these drawings, you know. But the reality is, is that before yesterday, it was a dream, right? It was a dream. Yesterday, the reality really kind of set in. I was super excited when I saw them, blown away at things. And then the longer the night went on, the more stressed out I got. And the fact is, is that it's a huge project. And I've done a lot of big projects, but nothing like this. And I just don't know if it's too big. I don't know, honestly, if I can handle it. And I'm gonna to be totally honest with you guys, I am stressing out. For those of you guys that have been with me for a long time, you know that the things that I like to do, I like to not go into debt. I like to just pay for them outright. I don't want to have like this, the, the, the burden of having like to owe a ton of money. So, you know, I budgeted a bunch of money for this expansion and I've been working so hard uh, in a way to try to do this, right? And I thought to myself that I could do it. I really did. You know, in my budget, I thought, okay, this would cost this much, this would cost this much. And don't get me wrong, I knew it was going to be a lot of money, but I was yesterday it kind of hit me that I don't know if my budget is right and next week I'm actually meeting with a friend of mine that does building and we're gonna go over the plans and just get an idea but I have a feeling after seeing that and don't get me wrong I mean that I want it to be grand you know it was so much more impressive than I ever expected and I just thought to myself that's what I want you know I don't want to go cheap I don't want to do it on the halfway and then regret it the truth is I want to just continue to follow that dream but at the same time the reality really sunk in last night that it may cost my entire budget for everything just for that building to be done to look at it, and then I have to pay for everything else and and honestly I just don't know if I can do it I mean and it's got me really stressed out you guys know that over the last you know 15 16 months I've dealt with anxiety a lot you know it's been a, a major issue well I've gotten so much better and honestly over the last few weeks I felt really really good last night it really kind of overwhelmed me and I'll be honest with you guys I'm having kind of a bad day I'm not gonna lie to you I tell you I take you on the good the bad the ugly today is a tough one for me so in the comments do me a favor cheer me up a little bit you know encourage me because you know this is a dream I want to achieve but I'm in a point where for the first time I think that it's maybe a dream that was too big and maybe I can accomplish it but I want to figure out a way to do it I mean whatever I can do I want to try to figure it out but uh I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm having a little bit of a rough day. With that being said, you know the best thing that I can do is actually hang out with my animals and hang out with you guys and hopefully that'll make me feel better. And typically I would get in with Ivy because she's my support animal. You guys know that, I love being in there, but she's in shed, so I can't get in with Ivy, which is a little bit of a bummer. So uh, I'm gonna find something else to play with. And you know, it's a big toss up between snakes like Perdita, Sunrise, Night Fury, Al Machino, that I really love to hang out with. It isn't with Ivy, but the fact is, is that albino burmese like sunrise here are pretty important to me they uh they really started the whole thing when it came to my success in breeding reptiles to be honest with you and the history of these guys is pretty interesting in 1983 they were imported into the country and then bob clark actually bought the first one in 1986 actually produced the very first albino burmese pythons and believe it or not that changed the entire reptile world because before that there was really no investment quality animals. Everyone was just kind of trading, maybe things were a couple bucks, but they sold for $1,600 and everybody wanted them. I mean, every guy that was working with reptiles was like getting rid of all the reptiles just to pay $3,200 for a pair of albino furries python. And that's what really started the reptile investment world, to be totally honest with you. And then in 1987, just one year later, is when I bought my first pair of albino Burmese python. And that's where it started. I mean, the whole BHB thing started with an albino albino Burmese python. And if I've got my story straight, it was a guy named Anson Wong that actually found it in the wild, or didn't necessarily find it, but got it over in Southeast Asia, and then sold it to Tom Crutchfield, and who in turn sold it to Bob Clark. I think that that's the right story. Nevertheless, the timeline is certainly right. And you know what? Ever since I've had albino Burmese pythons, and Sunrise is such a sweetheart, and really, honestly, you know, spending time with these animals uh, does make me feel better. You know, I mean, it's where I feel the most comfortable and and uh, and I know I'll be okay guys you know it's gonna be all right I'm sure I'll get past this in some way or another we'll figure out how to fulfill this dream and next week we'll find a little bit more information out about 
whether we can do it and the price that it's gonna cost. And I'm hoping that the budget that I've uh, slotted for this isn't completely slaughtered by how beautiful the facade of the building is. But I mean, my mind is going a million miles a minute and that's when my anxiety kicks up, is when my mind can't stop. And right now there are so many things going over in my mind. So uh, again, in the comments, call me down guys. I need your help bad today. You guys know I pull a lot of clutches. We actually have six ball python clutches today. We're gonna pull three of them right now. We're we're gonna do it a little bit different so it's not maybe as boring for you guys because I'm gonna talk a lot of information as I'm pulling out the other three clutches like I said we'll pull over on our patreon page all the clutches we don't put in the vlog we put over on patreon so the first off you know you might see sometimes I have a paper towel that is just because when I go through I check all the ball pythons and the ones that actually have eggs I put a paper towel just so I can identify them really quickly right it's a lot easier for me so let's go ahead and pull this animal down real quick and this happens to be a het pie girl and this is bred to a pie female so I like the fact that we've been using that game like what will we actually produce from this clutch right this is het pie to pie mama's definitely not happy with me I'm gonna give you a hint here it's gonna be pies and het pies that's all that we're gonna produce but I want to know down in the comments what's the percentage or average percentage of pies that we produce from a het pie to a pie clutch I'm gonna try to get mama off these eggs really quick and basically I want to talk to you guys a little bit more than just a, the the normal kind of thing I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I'm doing and by by the way this girl looks like she has one or two eggs left in her so I kind of made a mistake right here you can see this one's laying I'm gonna go ahead cover her up really quick get her back in in the rack and let her lay the rest of her eggs and that happens sometimes when you actually see a female and you think that she's done laying you get her off and I'll say like oh my gosh she's got an egg or two left she should be fine we did disturb her a little bit but I don't think it's gonna be too bad right now we have two four six eight eggs and it looked like she had two more eggs so I think we're gonna have ten eggs now let's start by saying that you know I'm using something that's called hatch right here which is actually a water isomer mixed with perlite you can use perlite you can use perlite you can use vermiculite you can use uh, water with the suspension there's a lot of cool like sims containers and a few other containers that you can get to actually incubate your eggs but basically we want to again just always remove the eggs from the top here just so that they fit in really nicely and like I said I'll mark this clutch here and we'll go back and check this female here in a couple hours and put the rest of the eggs in there like I said I think there'll be a total of 10 eggs in this one now I incubate at 88 to 89 degrees and I incubate in a walk-in incubator there's a lot of different incubators you can use I have used a walk-in for the last probably 10 years and to me it's just the easiest to keep the whole room but again I'm producing lots of clutches for someone that's producing one or two clutches there's a lot of options that you can buy an incubator that's you know gonna fit one to five clutches something like that moving on to clutch number two which is actually a pastel chocolate it's actually bred to a banana chocolate spinner so again in the comments what would a banana chocolate spinner bred to a chocolate pastel bring you as far as the amount of commutations and what are the odds I just love you know testing you guys this girl has actually been around for a long time it's one of my first pastel chocolates I ever produced probably 12 or 13 years ago we do look like we have a few infertile eggs in here but there's a bunch of fertiles as well and that happens and you know when you talk about fertility like this a lot of times it can be one of two things you know the fact that that male had already fathered four other clutches with hundred percent fertility he may just have ran out of sperm you know the sperm actually sometimes gets infertile after a while and that could be the case here mama looks like she wants to give me a little bit of a love nip here so I'm gonna to try to get these eggs out without that happening and then the other thing that happens is that as it warms up down here in the dungeon it actually even a female that has fertile sperm in her sometimes can actually fry there were some people that used to breed like lower end males to really more expensive females and then just as they were getting closer to ovulation they would kick the temperature up to like 99 degrees it would fry all the sperm and then they put a more expensive male in it would breed it and it would father the clutch now I'll tell you that's a pretty dangerous thing to to do because you could just get an infertile clutch of eggs so I don't suggest doing it but my point is is that's really what the infertility usually comes down to this girl's laid I don't know probably seven or eight clutches and they're almost always fertile so the fact that they're infertility is probably more of a male issue or it could be a temperature issue because now we were at you know 82 83 degrees down here we're at probably like 85 86 87 degrees most days down here we've got two four five good eggs four slugs here and basically you know the breeding season starts you know way back in October November and that's when this whole process really begins and then the last clutch uh, is this lemon blast het axanthic bred to a dragonfly het axanthic so VPI axanthics are amazing and this looks like it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful clutch but like I said you know this process started way back in November so think about being so diligent for you know seven months basically working on the projects and then you get the fruits of your labor which of course are beautiful clutches like this again one little slugger here but ultimately it looks like a really good fertile clutch which I'm really excited about and again you know it's about getting the males in getting food into 
females continuing to breed. We've went through the follicle growth from 10 millimeters to 20 to 30, uh, ovulation, and then of course after they ovulate, about 20 days later they'll go through what they call a pre-lay shed, and then 30 days from that pre-lay shed on average they'll lay eggs. Again, it could be a few days earlier. We had the one clutch that went, what, 40 something days this year, so it certainly can't happen. Mama is definitely not happy right now, so I have to be super careful, because she's gonna wanna bite me. I'm just gonna kinda manipulate her around so that she's not looking at me. Don't look at me, girl. We'll get her cage all cleaned up and all that type of stuff. And you can see that pet azanthic. Again, this is a lemon blast, which is a pastel on the pinstripe, but it's not got much yellow on it. And that azanthic sometimes will have something that they call visual head. So there's basically a bleed through that actually looks like it fades the yellow out. And the azanthic is actually an animal that is lacking xanthophore, which is the yellow pigment, right? And for whatever reason, even the heterozygous lacks some of that yellow. But of course, these babies, when they're born, are gonna be more silver. And let's go ahead and keep the game going. Again, it was a dragonfly, which is a fire, a pastel, and a pinstripe, and it's bred to a lemon blast, het for azanthic. So they're both het for azanthic. So what can we produce in this clutch? So let me know down in the comments here what you guys think. We've got two, four, six, eight beautiful eggs, one little slugger, not too bad. So those are the three clutches we're gonna pull today. Wanted to give you guys some information about breeding, what we do, all that other stuff. Again, these guys will actually be able to be cut at 57 days, but probably would hatch anywhere from 58 to 60 days on their own in the incubator. Uh, gonna pull the other three clutches over on Patreon. All right, guys, so looks like we're trying to get Lucy out. Brett, I can grab that input right there. Quite a bit of a hard time, but she's pooped and peed all over the place. So getting her back in, getting her in this tub right now is definitely gonna be better for her and our safety. Come on, big girl, let's go. Man, she's got some weight to her, man. Holy cow. Look at, look at that head, are you kidding me? Oh, all right, big 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 big. Go, 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 quick, quick, quick. There you go. I don't know if you guys have uh, seen Lucy's poops before, but we are very familiar with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a bowl of Lucky Charms in there. <laughs> Does it stink? <laughs> oh, you can really taste it in your mouth. Another thing that always cheers me up is all the stuff that you guys send me. You send me all kinds of stuff. This is actually from YOX2 Reptiles from Waco, Texas. Uh, feels like some shirts, but you know, I always like shirts, so I am excited to see what they actually have sent me. Looks like some pretty cool shirts too. Actually a little, uh, wow, that's actually pretty cool. Let's take a look at this here real quick. This is some shorts. What? Oh my God, this is gonna be dope. When I'm getting it with Ivy, I you got some You match, right? I know, yeah, she won't even know it's me. So I got actually a couple pair of shorts. Thank you so much, that is dope. And then what do we got here? This is cool, this is nice, I like it. This is a chameleon, which is awesome, super dope. I like that one a lot. And then we have a little snaky thing right here. That's awesome, so thank you so much. That's I love that stuff. As a matter of fact, speaking of apparel, if you don't mind, go to reptilearmy.com. That'll cheer me up too. Join the army, I really do appreciate you guys. And thank you for these shirts, I absolutely love them. There's no doubt that this guy always puts a smile on my face. I mean, he is truly an urban dinosaur. I mean, he is so cool, so awesome. But his paws are so strong. I tell people this all the time. He looks amazing and he's super tame, but when he grabs onto you and he wants to go, he rips into you, trust me, and he is just amazing so I can't imagine life without Elvis and and all the monitors really I mean monitor lizards are just so smart and they're just so interesting and Elvis is a one-of-a-kind there's no doubt about it all right buddy go go explore we'll let him kind of run around here for the next hour or so and and like I said uh, on even the darkest of days if you spend a little time with an animal as awesome as Elvis there's no way you can't smile on the inside because I mean who couldn't love an animal like that you know, no one said it was going to be easy, you know, it never is easy when you're following your dreams. I guess uh, I was just surprised, to be honest with you, that I got hit so hard last night and then woke up this morning and, and, and felt so kind of yucky, you know, if that makes any sense, because I knew I was so excited about it. Yesterday, I couldn't wait. I was like giddy. I was like, oh my gosh. And then when I finally saw it, I was like, oh, this is amazing. It's so much more incredible than I thought. And, I, and in my head, now I can see myself driving up every day and seeing that building and, and being so like, oh my my gosh, that's our place. We're creating this amazing experience for people. And uh, I think it's uh, it's got so much promise. And I think maybe the fact that I'm starting to question whether or not I can do it is why my anxiety is so high today. And, uh, but I'm gonna, listen guys, I, I said yesterday that this was step three of 100. You know, we're at step three and a half or four now, you know, so we, we, we gained one more step, but we still have a long way to go. And, and maybe during those next 10 steps, 
the, the solution will present itself, you know, and, and I'll understand how I can achieve this goal, you know, and, and again, it's like I said, you know, I know I can borrow the money and this, that, but I just, to me, that's more pressure, you know, if I owe a bunch of money on, on the aquarium slash reptarium, then it, I don't want it to steal the fun because I'm worried about paying the bills, you know, I, I, I love the fact that I live freely and I don't have to worry about being like, you know, have all this debt in my life and stuff like that. And, and um, so somehow, I guess I'll figure it out, you know, and hopefully we can still make it a reality. But I guess it was surprising to me when I actually saw the plans and I saw everything, how much my mind started spinning out of control. And that's what anxiety is about, is the what if thinking, and what if this, what if that, and I gotta worry about this, and I gotta worry about that, and what about this, and what about that. And um, I have to just uh, take myself down a level right now and, and realize that uh, number one, uh, if I can't do it right now, maybe I can do it in a year. Maybe two years from now I can do it. Uh, I don't have to do it right away. I want to do it right away. I think about it every single day, but um, if the timing isn't right, it's not right. And, and, and I don't know yet. You know, I'd like to know from you guys, what do you think? You know what I mean? Do you think I can do it? Do you think that, um, do you have some solutions for me? I, I don't even know what to think, to be honest with you. But, uh, but again, I, I'm glad that you guys are like my therapy and, and I can read your comments and I really do appreciate it. So uh, like I said, most of the time I'm here for you, happy, cheery, positive. Uh, today I need you. So, uh, so you be my, uh, my cheerleaders for the day and let me know in the comments what you think. And, Wow, I tell you what, uh, yeah, and I, I think I'll be okay. I think give it a day or so and, and, and maybe it'll settle in and, and, and I can relax a little bit. So uh, thank you for letting me share this with you and, and it's uh, it's part of the journey and, and this is, like I said, always kind of my daily diary and if one day we do this Reptarium Aquarium expansion, I can maybe look back on this vlog and think, wow, remember how stressed I was that day? And, uh, and it all worked out. So let's hope that's the case. But uh, yeah, so we'll, we're gonna be okay, guys. We're gonna make it.